Hey everybody, it's, it's, it's Hey everybody, it's Dot Dupont. Hey, how are you doing today? You're gonna talk about Psych Fuck you. It's me, Hushy Rodcore. And I'm here to uh, do another one of these things. Which is called Rodcore Retrospective. Which is when I who am I kidding? I can't wear this for the whole thing. Um <laughs> This is where we listen to some old music of mine from yesteryear and talk about what was going on in my life back then and uh, sort of watch me like react and process in real time like listening to this music that's connected to a bunch of memories that like I probably haven't thought about in a while. Um, today we are doing some music by uh, one of my aliases, Gay Aunt Jane, uh, which is some of my weirdest, most experimental and like mentally ill music, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, everybody can hear me and stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, this was like Gay Aunt Jane rose up out of like uh, me learning how to use like software synthesizers for the first time. Like I, in in a lot of my really old music, I used exclusively sound fonts, um, which are like romplers, if you know what that is, like banks of sounds from other sources that can be played like instruments, like inside of software. Um, and I didn't learn, know anything about synthesizing my own sounds or, or using software synthesizers uh, for a long time until I started working on this album, Gay Aunt Jane's Wacky Knife Play Fortress, um, where I used a program called Massive, which is, which is a, a kind of dated um, synth program now, but I really liked it, and I liked uh, downloading lots of presets and then like tweaking them and then like pretending like they were my own presets and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, Gaunt Jane as a character, let's go over to the... This is something I should have done uh, during the, the Amaryllis episodes, but I never did. Um, let's go over to the Forlung Wiki, um, which is a thing that exists, by the way, if you didn't know. You can... It used to be at the domain forlung.net, but I don't have that domain anymore. So now you have to Google forlung wiki, and then you can find it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read what this says. I'm not going to provide all the context for what all of these things mean. You can catch yourself up on the forlung wiki if you want to, and you can click on this link over here, Lungverse Comics, to read some comics that take place in this universe that I constructed so long ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, okay, so... <clears throat> the widow to the late Madame Baroness von Beetle Supreme and current monarch of the Atrophier, Gay Aunt Jane is Delirium's muse. Like all muses, she once had no objective physical form, as all perceivable, visible, vi 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 visual information composing her form served only as a simplified abstraction of millions of complex interwoven concepts too cryptic to be interpreted by any mammalian brain. <laughs> Throughout the vast expanse of the atrophier, she could be heard wailing deafeningly and moaning greasy timbres, some of which have been successfully recorded and proved to be musical. It is thought that she is perhaps still mourning the loss of her beloved. And, okay, this is information about Knife Play Fortress, which is uh, a place that she lives, <laughs> sort of, or once did. The matriarchs of the Atrophere once lived in an expansive void of overstimulating non-objective clutter now known as knife play fortress to English-speaking animals. <laughs> no knife play actually occurs in knife play fortress as a knife is far too simple an object to successfully pass through the boundaries of knife play fortress without being boiled apart into thousands of smaller ideas. With the balance of delirium and dissociation permanently upended by the death of the Madame Baroness, Knife Play Fortress became an erratically composed monstrosity of forms rapidly erecting and caving in on itself in the blink of an eye in an unending cycle, ultimately leading to the collapse of the atrophier. <laughs> 
So, yeah. I'm not going to go into what any of that means. You're free to do your own research. Um, <laughs> but the first, this, this first album came out back in uh, February of 2016. Um, and I was calling it Grease Dance. I was calling this the genre of this music, I was calling it Grease Dance, which like, um, I think I was just having fun, like trying to, to, to make, you know, make up a genre, like everybody wants to innovate. Um, but now, like, I, genre labels don't really, uh, aren't particularly useful to me personally. Um, so now I don't call this music anything. I just call this music, like, some, some weird stuff that I made back in the day. Um, this first track uh, is called One Storm at Paranoia Boil to the Surface of a Sleeping Teenage Brain. If you are an OG Forlong fan and you are perceptive and have a decent memory, you will know that this track title has been edited um, because people do not like it uh, a lot of the time when you are honest in your self-referential um, titling of, of things when it pertains to like your development as a queer person or whatever. Anyway, um, we'll get it, we'll get it rolling. <laughs> Oh yeah, and please, please donate to those links over there. I have a family to feed. I would super appreciate it. I love you. So as you can, <laughs> as you can plainly tell, this is uh, 2016 brain damage incarnate for me. 
Um, I was dating my first, like, transgender internet girlfriend who it, like, super didn't work out with. And, um, but I was very early, like, in transition. I'd only been transitioning for, uh, wait, I guess September, October, November, December, January. I'd been transitioning like a little bit under like half of a year. Um, and like my Adderall prescription was still fresh and like I was like uh, really getting in there and like uh, <laughs> trying to tear everything up and, and see what I could do uh, with the technology, um, even though it was pretty dated at the time. This album art, by the way, is like, um, I made this for, uh, for an art class in community college. It's a self-portrait um, that's like sort of half based on Duchess from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Um, and then I like melted some wax all over it and like ripped up like an audio cassette and like um, broke a CD in half and like put all this detritus and garbage all over it um, to make it look cool. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is like one of the coolest things I've ever drawn, like, I have to use this, like, for album art. Um, this next song, at the beginning of it, features a voicemail that was left on my phone by the, like, first trans friend that I ever had at community college. Uh, we were, like, some of the only, the, like, trans girls on campus. And she was full, she was so like full tilt insane. And like, I was like very like obsessed with like learning about her because I thought she was extremely interesting and hilarious, even though her, she was like a full tilt train wreck. And like, uh, she, ooh, she left a message on my, uh, on my phone like one morning asking if like uh, I could like go get breakfast with her, but like she, I was not awake. And, um, but I saved it and put it in this song because I, <laughs> thought that it was funny and charming. I'm barely conscious. I'm laying in bed and I was going to ask if you want to go get food because I'm lazy and I hate going places for myself and I didn't even know if there was food right now. So I'm pretty sure there is and I was going to be like, hey, two questions. One, is there food? Secondly, if there is food, do you want to get food? But no, you're, you're not apparently in a phone answering kind of mood. So I'm going to lay here and die. <laughs>
Okay. What did I say? Don't mind now. <laughs> uh, I was, wow. Some really interesting stuff going on, like, texturally back then. I certainly, like, cannot, like, ever picture myself making music like this ever again, simply because I have lost entirely, like, any and all grasp on, like, how. I have no idea, like, how really I made any of, of, of this. I was, like, still learning the software, like, still learning FL Studio, and, like... <laughs> um... I like it though. I like. I'm starting to understand like what I was going for with the na the with trying to call this music grease dance. You know, like I can I can feel that in in the sound. <laughs> it's gr it's like gray and gross and like it keeps slamming into itself. Like, <laughs> uh, but then like it breaks for like like cool groovy textural stuff and like that's cool like I, I was on some shit back then I guess like <laughs> it's cool it's neat I don't know <laughs> um let's see what the next track has in store for us Obvious coping in this one. Oh. Okay. The contrast is amazing. Cool. <laughs> I wow the like the flip the the gradient through and then back around like <laughs> emotionally like very wow cool <laughs> genuinely stimulating to me in the year twenty twenty one um <laughs> I think that like I might have like I think. Like, I'm beginning to recall that, like, half of this music was kind of started, like, when I was dating my first, like, internet, like, transgender GF, um, and I feel like we broke up and then I finished the second half of it. It's like, it's not like 50-50, like, there isn't a part in the middle of the album where it breaks and then suddenly you can tell the difference. I think it's literally, like, half of these, like, songs were finished, like... Um, like, they were all sort of half-finished, and then they all sort of got half-finished, the other 50%, I don't know. So, this one's kind of emo, I think. <laughs> um, this past one, I mean. This next one is just weird, I don't know. This one, this next one's called Pets, and I remember it being weird, and I also remember it being, like, one of the first ever songs that I ever made that somebody else did a remix of. Um... trying to think of who did the remix, but I can't. <laughs> uh, anyway, here's Fitz.
Those little squeaks. <laughs> oh. Fuck. <laughs> Weirdo song. Weirdo song. Poppy rusty synth is so cool. I was really just like doing shit back then. I was really just like, like opening the computer and just like doing shit back then. Like that was so neat. I, I'm pr like pretty sure in the next one, in the next one, which is called Cracked Clavicles, which was my favorite track from this album when I made this album. Um, I think that there's a part in it that you might also recognize from P9 versus Four Lung Dead Boys Summer Rave Wars. Um, which is an album that we'll listen to together at some point in the ambiguous future. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that there's a synth part in this song that I that I reused for, for a song in that one. I don't remember which track in that one, but... dramatic orchestra hits.
think the bit that I mentioned is coming up. No, not yet. Wait, very soon. Here. That part. That, lo that long, that big long Halley fart at the end. <laughs> um, by the way, this album and a bunch of my other older albums um, are available uh, on Bandcamp only if you subscribe to Money Club, which, which is a club that gives me like three dollars every month. And in exchange for that, you get to have access to just like a ton, just tons of several hundred old songs from from many, many old albums that are not like publicly available anymore. Um, so if you want to check that, if you want to check this album out and other like older stuff of mine on your own, um, that is that's how you can do that. Um, and once again. There's there's links over there if you want to donate because this is my full time job and I got bills to pay and I love you guys so much. Um, this next one is cool and I remember liking it. Um, it's called Ash Befalls Russ, Syringe Befalls Body. Parentheses. Keys and scales can get fucked for all I care. Um, and <laughs> that is a. Uh, good indicator of my general attitude towards music theory at the time because it was long before I had gone to school uh, for music. Um, I was still in school for for uh, English <laughs> um, because I wasn't uh, smart enough to be in school for horticulture, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. Um, but anyway, this song sounds like this.
outfit is so cool. That like big, that big blare before the, before the last little bar is that like. that part <laughs> um, this next song is so was so ambitious <laughs> at the time um, it's a cover of steel softly under castle walls from the first uh, the first I don't know if it's actually the first but uh, the first nearest day at Disneyland album that I ever listened to which was attention shoppers from 2005 um, this is a cover that I did uh, of that song when that song was 11 years old um, and there's like listening to this song today is weird because like there's just there's just one bit you might know it when you hear it where like this one sound pierces through the entire mix and just like punches a hole in it before getting sucked back out and the mix returning to normal um, and I've always been so, like, every time I re-listen to it, I'm always like, what the fuck? Like, how, I did, how did I, how did, how did I do that? Um, I'd mix music so much differently than I, than I did back then that there's just like, there's, I have no idea how to achieve an effect like that again, but here it is. I love insane people music. I hope you heard it. Oh shit.
I love you, Gia! What a trip. What a crazy, what a crazy song. I have so much fun listening to that one again, honestly. Um, I still think that I hold the world record for most most Lauren Bosefield covers um, that any artist has ever done. Um, I have, like, th coming in at three. <laughs> um, I love that woman's work to death. Um, this is the last one. This is the last track on this album. Um, and it's called Gay Aunt Jane's Wacky Knife Play Fortress. This song, um, spawned from a melody that I used to play on the piano all the time when I was idling or bored or just f f fucking around. Anyway, and then I just took that melody and I stacked like 10 billion like sound fonts and like synth noises like on top of each other, um, all with that same melody. And then I was just like, okay, like let's see what kind of insane texture like this makes. And then that turned into that turned into this song and I still it's still in my muscle memory and I still play this little melody all the time when there's any sort of like keyboard instrument like in front of me like and I'm just like fucking around <laughs> is the first Gay on Jane album. Uh, now we get to go somewhere completely weirder, but a different flavor of weirder. Um, oh yeah, my last footnote about Steel Softly Under Castle Walls is that if I was to cover this song in the modern age, um, which I wouldn't, but if I did, I would... The only thing I would change is that I would I would cover the vocal part with my voice because I'm not afraid to do that anymore. Um, back then I was not singing ever on on these songs. I used to sing when I was like uh, like a teen boy. Um, I used to go busking all the time with my acoustic guitar and play folk punk songs. Um, but I stopped singing when I started transitioning. And I like singing again now, but I took a long break from it during that. Um, let's let's find our next our next stop on this tour, on this crazy tour of oh, mental illness, um, detritus and filth. Um, this one is called "Gay on Jane's Static Caravan of Psychosomatic Crisis." And this one I did when I was in university. And this one is from October 2016. So, like, the better part of a year after the last album that we just listened to. Um, what can I say about this one? This is one of the first albums where I began accepting um, audio from... Uh, 
from fans like like receiving vocaroos and like little voice recordings and like putting them into like my songs and things um which is a lot of fun and i want to keep doing that i have an email it's rardcore at gmail.com you can send audio you can send recordings of yourself talking just saying anything like just saying like i'm so and so and you're listening to rardcore or just like you know whatever stupid bullshit you want to say like you can send it to me and i might sample it um, there's a high chance that i'll sample it um because i, I like to do that um this is one of the first that, that I did that on. Not every song has those samples, but a few of them do. And um, this first song, which is called Yellow Cartilage, um, I remember being really proud of, or like just imp like impressed with myself for making it specifically because it doesn't, it at the time didn't sound like anything else that I had ever made. And I was like, this just sounds like somebody else entirely made this. Um, I don't think that now, obviously, because now I have a wider sort of scope of, like, what my, um, what my music sounds like, um, and, like, what is characteristic of, of my sound or whatever, and then now I can tell that I made this song, but I'm still really proud of, of, like, what's going on with it, like, melodically. I'm also gonna go pee really quick, but I'm gonna let this play. Oh, one last note. I synthesized these bug noises by like with a with a VST. <laughs> Shit. Wah. Like, whoa, like so crazy. <laughs> <Bleh>. <laughs> this next one <coughs> is called Masochist Mudroom. And I I still definitely like this one a lot, too. Um, there's a lot of detritus in it. There's a lot of, like, wow, wow, like you know, in it, like, and there's, like, some chords, and they're, like, they're, like, whoa, you know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, hey fucking making music over here, hey, fuck, uh. Hey, fuck, <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Right there, right there. A, a quick note about this intro is that, um, it's, it's, the audio is sampled from a video by, um, Jared Kinesthiniak, who was, uh, Jared Kithestediak, who was a, a, a person who I, I was mutuals with on Tumblr forever ago, who I have not talked to in many, many years, um, but uh, I, I remember really liking all of the, the, they made funny videos and things, and, and um, some really interesting and, like, stimulating music, and I, I hope that they're still doing stuff, um, and I hope that I didn't just, like, dead name them or anything. <laughs> 
but uh, wherever you are, Kinesthetic Act shouts out, and um, I, I hope you found you have found greener pastures. Well, I mean, you have a general idea, right? So you may. With what? With what? Hey, sorry about. I'm sorry about what happened earlier. I mean, no, no, it's okay. I'm not sure. No, no it's okay. Got into it. No, it's okay. So you're talking about no. Like, are you, like, are you hearing these chords? Like, what the fuck? Sample towards the end. Come on, come on, catch me now. Catch me, Pokemon. Can you come in? You can't catch me anyhow. That's from a song from Pikachu's Vacation off the first Pokemon movie. Don't tell anybody that I sampled it. They're gonna sue me. They're gonna sue me. This one is called Grimace and Grind. I don't really remember anything about it, except for I know that there's a sample that's that's like, DJ, bring that bass, yeah. <laughs> Ugh, weirdo song.
What a fucking weirdo song. Was that a key change? Did I do a key change? Wow, holy guacamole, what an, what an interesting little tune. Um, ah, ah, I like that part where it goes insane. I like that part where it goes... <laughs> I've always been this, I've always been this. I've always been like, look at me, like, this is like what I've always... <laughs> this is how, this is just... <laughs> I'm so glad that this is what's happening. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> this nose is very not comfortable, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, my second Lauren Bosefield cover is on this Gay Aunt Jane album. All of my Lauren Bosefield covers are, are on Gay Aunt Jane albums. Um, this one is called A Prayer for Lauren's Hands because this is when... This is from when... Um, Lauren's building burnt down in a fire, um, and she got really bad burns on her hands and arms, um, and, uh, I was concerned f for her and wanted to pay some, some homage, um, and, but it's actually a cover of, uh, the song Flying High. Um, which is from her like weird sort of disjointed series of singles that that happened back in the day around you know back in 2016 I think um, and then at the end it kind of transitions into a little bit of crack night um, but then I did a full-fledged cover of crack night on a, on a later game on Jane Owen. so here it is <laughs>
I fucking broke this string on my party hat already. I accidentally bought this one single party hat for fucking like almost five dollars. I thought it was going to be a pack with more than one fucking party hat in it. And then they sent me one RNG party hat. Like I didn't get to pick the design or anything. They sent me one single party hat for five fucking dollars. I am so pissed. And now the string is broken. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Party hats come and go, but but Gay Aunt Jane is forever. Except maybe not really, I have no idea. Well <laughs> you know. Um this next one, I don't fucking remember anything about it. I think it's like maybe kinda dramatic. Um, which is like you know, everybody loves <laughs> everybody loves that. <laughs> so let's check it out. Oh, Jesus. You kids ever heard of electronic music? I know devil it's for rebellion when I see it. You have no idea how lost you are. I'll pray for you. You don't want me to, but I will pray for your godless souls. Ah, uh, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> Weirdo song. I, it was cool though. Very dynamic. Very cinematic. Very intense. Ah, uh, cool. Very cool. I like it. <laughs> oh. These earbuds are starting to hurt in my ears. I might be getting close to the point where I'm not going to worry as much about what my hair is doing, and maybe we'll put on headphones that are more comfortable. I think that's what is going to happen. It is going to make this room hotter, though, which is... frankly unacceptable. Um, one sec. Alright, cool. I should really install like a bow on my headphones. I think that that would really improve my quality of life significantly. I've probably even mentioned that on another stream before. I've had this ambition for so long, I have not acted on it at all. Um, what are we doing again? Oh yeah, right, Rarcore Retrospective, featuring Gayon Jane. Uh, this song is called Night Chomps, and this song is called Night Chomps because Night Chomps is something, is a condition that I am affli afflicted with. Um, when I am sleeping, everyone that I, everyone that I have ever slept near or with or whatever has, has pointed out to me 
that um, in my sleep I go. La, la, la. I click. I I chomp. My teeth. Like I don't even like just grind them. I like chomp them. Um, so I got night chomps, and so I made a song about it. It's called Night Chomps. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> This is Gay and Jane's hot girlfriend, Gay and Jane, and you're listening to Gay and Jane. Hey guys. I feel like this should have been like the first or second track. Not sure why it's the sixth. so cute and silly. This motherfucker crawls into my girlfriend's DMs and goes, oh, you can't be gay because you have a boyfriend. And it's like, what the fuck? You know? Like, really, like, the word gay has, like, lost its fucking meaning. I mean, I have a friend that's named the gay on Jane, and it's like, you know, maybe she's happy, maybe she's, like, just actually queer. I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, like, you can do whatever the fuck you want with the word gay. My name is Oliver Text, and you're listening to Floor Long, fuck you. <laughs> Kyrie, if you are out there, mad respect. I hope you're doing well. Wow, okay, a lot going on in but that one. Be dead. Oh. But until then, he's going on chain. Oh, I forgot about all, every single part of that I forgot about. Um, whoa, I don't know what I was smoking in the middle of it. Um, 
with those big, nasty, greasy cords. But I guess that's really kind of what makes Gay on Jane Gay on Jane, is that it's highly psychotic. Um, I wouldn't ever make a texture like that again, I don't think. I think that similar textures to that big, ravey, gross synth part, like, like, I think maybe, like, some of that is, a, like, a little present on, like, the newest P9 album, Fall, which is not very new. It's really kind of old. Um, but I liked how this song flipped at the end to be, like, that jump-up kind of jock jam vibe. <laughs> um, but, like... It's so hard for me to think of, like, where I was, like, mentally and emotionally for, like, during this, this album. I was, like, certainly, I would think I was in a poly triad with two other trans girls. One of them lived in Connecticut, one of them lived in Virginia. Um, and I was going to school the year, the year that I was in university studying music is when this happened. And, like... Man, I don't know. I've really blacked out, like, <laughs> there's some shit in there, like, at school, at school specifically, that, like, I, this, this album, like, I feel like I was, like, fucking robo tripping or something, like, when I did a lot of this, and it's just, like, gone from my, deleted from my memory bank. There's a, there's a few, like, moods that I, that I am forming, this, like, like, catching on to associations with in my brain, but a lot of it's, like, pfft. What the fuck is this? When did this happen? Like, where the fuck is this, this gonna fucking come from? But, um, anyway, this one is called Pro Prolapsed Soul. And I remember this one being on a compilation album somewhere that that I had a fun, a fun time contributing to. Um, and I also remember being proud of, like, the main synth part of this, which is definitely jacked from a different song that I didn't make and then, like, chopped and screwed to make it in, to be a new thing. <laughs> it's so... Aw! Oh, grease dance! Ha! OMFG shouts out Maddie Girl Me. Oh my god. I, I know you're trying to turn this place into like an art exhibit or something, but this is this it's gone out of hand. The, I was trying to use the anti-utilitarian bathroom and I slipped and broke my legs on the zero friction bathroom mats. It's in just this morning, a gay on Jane, God, she's she really appreciated the concept behind the prolapsed soul, but she didn't realize until she entered the room that the straight up inside out motherfucker was an actual person once. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. You need to do something with that body. Something so that it's not growing things on it.
<laughs> that one's a lot of fun. I still really like it. Um, I can't remember who did that bit of of monologue towards the end, um, but whoever they are, thank you. Uh, it's it's so like crazy listening to to songs where I where I sample all of this fan content because it's like half of these people probably don't fuck with me anymore. Um, but the half that do, I love when you're in the chat and you're like, that's me! Like, <laughs> that shit's awesome. Because, like, this shit is from forever ago. 2016 was a fucking millennium ago. Like, can you believe that? Can you believe that people born in 2016 are 37 years old now? <laughs> I, this next song is a, rep it's a, rep it's a reprise uh, of, of, Gayant Jean's Wacky Knife Play Fortress, the song, you know, da, 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 except this time I stacked twice as many big fat sounds on it and I made it faster and I fucking, and I go nuts and I go insane. Um, <laughs> and I, and, and I, I love it. I love it a lot. I love you guys. I love everything about making music. I love everything about being a musician and having a, a good time exploring sounds. And this, I want, to, I'm ready to have fun. <laughs> Let's go. The very poorly automated fade in, very uneven. I like it, I love it. <laughs> OMFG, is the song over? Did the song end, you guys? Oh, oh, but what, what's that? Oh no, it's coming closer. Oh my god, no, get away. Ew, 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 ew. No, 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 no. Stop. Oh, oh my god. It's Keon Team. Holy guacamole, I'm gonna get so sweaty by the end of this stream. It is so hot in this fucking room, and I'm having such a good time. <laughs> um, I don't remember what the secret track is, um, but there is one. And you know what? I'm actually not going to play it. I'm going to say that uh, if you would like to hear the secret track that's attached to this album, um, you can go ahead and join Money Club and swag me out. Um, I love you all very, very much. Thank you so much for partying with me and having a good time and listening to me talk about this fucking disgusting monstrosity. Look at her. She's so gross and weird. I love her. I... There is, there is two parts to the gay Aunt Jane saga. 
there is her in this form, in this in this lack of form, maybe this ever changing sort of loose form, this weird representation of of her of her <coughs> not not realness. Um, and then there is later when she uh, exits, she's she's forced out of the atrophier during its collapse, and the energy from the the atrophier's collapse is harnessed by Minxmax to help her create a new body, um, which looks very different from from this. Um, but we are not quite there yet. There is one more Gay Aunt Jane album uh, before that. And we're gonna go and listen to it, I guess. It, it might be, the thing is, it might be, there's a lot of Gay Aunt Jane. Uh, and I might save the second part of her saga for a di for a, a different day, a different stream. Um, but we we do have one more. Um, this one is called Gay Aunt Jane's Hideous Crawl Space of Violent Secrets. And um, this one definitely has some depression involved, some some frustration some fear, a lot of anxiety, um, and it's, I, it's definitely quantifiably emo, I would say. Um, the first song is a cover of Marx's theme from S Kirby Superstar, um, which is one of my favorite pieces of video game music ever. Um, and covering it was really fun, and I got to make it sound extremely evil, and it was awesome. So I'm gonna play that now. Yay! 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 Okay. <laughs> this next one is called Rotten Apple Harlots, and it's featuring Yo-Yo Bingo. More down-tempo thing that I vaguely remember. <laughs> There's not very much that I can tell you about this one. You, the, I think probably the emotion will be evident as you hear it.
Ah, yes. It's all coming back to me now. Particularly unexpected place for for anime music, but okay. That's that, I guess. The, the suffering is evident, I, I can only assume. Um, yeah, simply... Oh, this one... I remember this one being insane. Uh, so, are you ready to be insane? I'm ready to be insane. Let's insane ourselves together as a family. Insane. Insane. I'm going insane. Forget Aunt Jane. Oh my god. <laughs> caro caro bonito. Insane. Oh. <laughs> 
Caro, Caro, Benito, please do not sue me. Do not give me a copyright strike on YouTube or I'll cry. Wow. Insane. I'm going crazy. <laughs> wow. This is crazy people music. I don't know anything about this. Who made this? I don't get it. Grease dance? I don't fucking know anything about that. This one is called Never Ending Oceans of Numbers and Oil. This album is from May 2017. Yeah, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> crazy music. Crazy music for crazy people by an insane person. Uh, uh, I'm literally trying so hard to remember, like, where I was or, like, what, like, what, like, May 2017, like, was like for me. And I, like, just, like, can't. Like, I have nothing. <laughs> I just I have I'm nothing. I have I I'm pretty sure that I was done with done being in college. I was done being in university. I think I was living in a house, a two-story house in the middle of the woods in Saco, Maine. With a girl I met on OkCupid. Okay and I can't remember anything. <laughs> 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 
clearly I have some some processing to do, uh, and I guess this music is the place for me to start doing that. Um, I did lots in the last one, in the last Amaryllis one. I know I, I did some, I had some emotions on camera, which was cool, which was fun, which which was fulfilling. Um, it felt nice, but like with this one, it's like it's I'm barely even scratching the surface of anything here. It's like I listen to this and I I'm, and I am like just gone. Like I I have nothing, like. <laughs> Which is crazy, because, like, I thought I was done having, you know, like, I thought I had undercovered most of my, like, past shit or whatever. Like, I don't know. This must be a more recent sort of deal, but, yeah. Um, I remember this next one. It's called, it's a cover of Lauren Bosefield's Crack Night. But, again, without the words. If I did the, if I covered this song in the modern age, I, um... I would sing on it, but uh, I don't think I have the project file anymore. Here it is. Wow, so that's that. Would have been so much cooler with vocals, but there weren't any. Ah, uh -huh. I've been doing a pretty bad job of looking at the chat because I'm so distracted by how weird I feel listening to this music. <laughs> so sorry about that. Oh, well, I'm not really sorry, but like, you know what I mean. Um, uh, I wish I brought my juggle balls in here, then I could actually be juggling during this. Uh, maybe I'll go get them. <laughs> oh no, but I can't, because I do, I do kind of remember this next one, or at least I remember it sounding kind of fun instead of just like deeply evil. Um, <laughs> it's called Rat's Ass, uh, and I remember re always liking this one.
Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go get my juggle balls. Oh man, that's fun. I how long until I actually just am streaming in like full like clown face, like full like white makeup, like ugh. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be so cool. I need more party hats, though. This is so fucked, dude. This is so fucked, dude. I'm still so... So bummed about this. Oh, I... Am... Having a good time, despite... Feeling just so weird. <laughs> Let's try the next one. This one I know is gonna be, like... Fucked up. I think this one's gonna be really emo. So let's do it. forget to send me money on PayPal and Cash App. I love you.
Oh my god. LeVar Burzum? Uh, this next one is called... <laughs> this next one is called Starving Scissor Tongue. Um, and I know that I got the Scissor Tongue part from a Cannibal Ox song from their first album, The Cold Vein, which is a... One of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time. But that's mostly what I remember about this song. I don't, I don't remember much else. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, I kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Holy shit! Oh my god, I'm going crazy! I'm going insane!
Oh my god, I was going so crazy. In May 2017, I was going so crazy. <laughs> I don't know. There's insanity here. There's angry, angry, frustrated, sad insanity here. Wow. There's only one song left on this album. And originally it started as a composition for school. And then later I made it into its own thing. But it's a, it's a, it's a miniature sonata. Or at least it follows the format of a sonata somewhat. But if you're like a music theory fag, I love you. But it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but, um, I remember being proud of it. I remember being proud of it because it's insane. And, um, <laughs> and I very much love to feel insane, if I'm being honest. This is the last song on this album. And then this stream, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to, like, open it up to, like, a little bit of the Q and A, maybe. Um, so let's listen to this last one, and then I'll take a couple of questions. Oh my God, those cars outside are so loud! I'm going crazy. Here we go.
MFG. That piece is so cool. It's so cool and so special. Um, and I'm still very proud of it. Um, as a special treat, I want to show off um, the composition of, of that song um, in FL Studio. Here, here it is. Oh my god. Impossible to make this actually like a size that makes sense. Ugh, oh, wow. There's so much shit on my screen. There's so much shit on my like overlay. Can you see this shit? <laughs> How about this? Can you see that? <laughs> can't fucking see anything. <laughs> but it's still so cool to look at them to look at the MIDI. <laughs> it's so insane. I'm trying to get back into a place where Adderall works this good for me because it really doesn't anymore and so I've been taking time off from from taking stimulants and it's made my life an insane roller coaster of deficit of attention and hyperactivity uh, a mess of a insane cyclone but I feel like when I start taking my meds again, it'll be worth it <laughs> for the tolerance break. Oh, it's here we go. Almost landed on my keyboard. Oh! So yeah, that's that. I hope you enjoyed getting to take a peek at that. <laughs> Let's see. Back to back to to business. Okay. So I guess like we're kind of I guess we're kind of like sort of done here, but like I want to open it up for questions. Does any 
anybody have any questions for me? Um, I can't guarantee that I'll know any of the answers if it's about these albums, but I am still happy to be here doing this. So. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of questions will you ask me today? I'd love to answer your questions. You guys are so cool and nice to me. I love you so much. I love you so, so much. Thank you so much for being nice to me all the time. You guys are so cool. Some people don't like to be nice to me, but you guys love to be nice to me, and that is why I love you so much, so much. Oh my god. Okay, there are some questions now. Uh, what's your favorite color right now? My favorite color right now is orange you're welcome for keeping your company tonight thank you so much for coming to hang out um how did I come up with the name gay aunt Jane well I used to be called Jane um and like I didn't really have like an uh like Herman alias, I guess, like, really nailed down yet, um, and I was gay, and I was an aunt, I, I do have nieces and nephews, though I haven't seen them since I started transitioning, like, they're, they're on the other side of the country, um, so I am gay, I am an aunt, and my name, uh, was Jane, <laughs> um, will I ever re-upload my hit song, Real Gamer, um, I think that it's in my Vine compilation on YouTube. I have a Vine compilation on YouTube, by the way. If you search my name and Vine, you'll find them. Um, I think that Real Gamer is in there. And it goes, everybody wants to be a real gamer. Something, something, uh, nobody is actually a real gamer. Unless you want to have sex with Mega Man or some shit like that. I don't remember. <laughs> How does it feel to be a funny doggy? It feels really good. It feels really, really good to be a funny doggy. I have I spent a long time not being a funny enough doggy, and now I'm now I'm at the level of funny that I, I would like to be. I like being a funny doggy. Um, <coughs> what is your favorite non puppy animal? My favorite non puppy animal is a ferret. I'm officially obsessed with ferrets. I became obsessed with ferrets last night, and I am going to make a ferret character because I'm obsessed with ferrets now. Um, ferrets are beautiful. They should be let out of their cage for at least four hours a day. They love to play. Uh, they sleep 18 hours a day. They love to crawl through tubes. If you tie a tube up in a crazy knot, the ferret will go through it, and that is so cool and awesome. Um, they also love ball pits. I am insane about videos of ferrets in ball pits. I'm officially fucking obsessed with ferrets. Um, they're so long, and they have, like, those silly little butts, and, like, they have those tails, and they stink. They're stinky. It's so awesome. I am a, definitely a ferretkin. Um, let's see, see. How should I send you fan art if I don't have Twitter? You should send it to rardcore at gmail.com. Um, that's R-A-W-R-D-C-O-R-E at gmail.com tips and tricks for making people love themselves um for me it was uh doing drugs in the mirror um doing hallucinogens and intactogens and looking in the mirror and talking to myself helped me figure out um how to forgive myself for my shortcomings and how to uh, soothe myself when I need to be soothed and how to encourage myself to persevere um, so that is my recommendation to you I know that's not an avail that's not like a readily available solution for everybody um, but I don't know if you ever have the opportunity that is that's what I recommend um, it could also be extremely terrifying depending on what your relationship with yourself is like right now so prepare for it to be terrifying 
Um, but it will be important. I'm glad I could provide valuable information for your evolution. Thank you for, for saying this is very valuable information for my evolution, because that's a phrase that makes sense to me, and I like that. How do you become more funny? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, jeez, there's so many questions now. What's the bestest candies? The bestest candies is... Whatever kind doesn't make me feel like shit. <laughs> which are which is like almost none of them. Um, I I like sugar-free gummy bears, but I never have them. Um, <laughs> do I remember the advice to all voice vine that I made? It's not actually a vine, it's just a video. It just happens to be seven seconds long. It was never actually on vine. Um, but yes, I do remember it. It's the one where I say, advice to all boys, put something in your butt sometime. I do. Yeah, I had a goatee. It was, it was, yeah, my first brush with internet fame. Tyler Oakley reblogged it on Tumblr, and all of these extremely basic, like, gay men started following me and going into my inbox and, like, hitting on me super hard, and I was, like, not prepared to handle that at the time. Like, and now I would be, I would be completely able to, to deal with that in, like, a, in a totally rational, like, you know, a polite and, like, nice way. But back then I was, like, not prepared for it. And so I, like, jumped away from, from social media entirely for, like, six entire months and then started transitioning and came back to social media and was like, guess what? I'm on HRT and Adderall. Let's fucking make some music. Like, <laughs> hard relate. Really going through tubes. Going through tubes. Number one, tubes. Love tubes. Opinion on kitties? Kitties, good. Oh my god. The chat is going crazy. What's your favorite magical anime girl? Oh my fucking god. The... Oh, I don't know. Damn. My favorite magical anime girl. Uh... I don't know about magical one. I like the girl from Made in Abyss. Um, how do you start learning FL Studio? Uh, you get it. You get the crack. You pirate the software, um, and then touch it. Start touching it until it makes a sound, and then keep touching it until it starts making sounds that are stimulating to you, and then continue to stimulate yourself by making sounds with it until you get bored and then export it and put it on SoundCloud and like post a link to it on your social media and just do that like just all the time. It doesn't matter if you like what the sounds sound like after you make them. It's like if you if you are stimulated in the moment as you're making them, then then somebody will feel that energy when they listen to it and they and they will enjoy it. What is my what is the worst monster flavor? That new like like shitty cream creamy pineapple bullshit monster the sugar free one what's my fave track on big gay summer mixtape uh that's a good question i'm not even looking at the track list Ugh. my favorite track on big gay summer mixtape is honestly let's loiter together is probably my favorite um, either that or the gore shit remix. Um, oh, 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 oh. What's my favorite energy drink slash flavor? Um, I really like this. I like Rockstar Recovery Lemonade. And, and, and like, I, as cliche as it is, I do enjoy the white sugar-free monster. I wish that they would make a sugar-free non-carbonated monster. I would fucking f lose my goddamn mind for that. Um, monster Rehab is also excellent. Um, I like shit that is, like, low in sugar content, or sugar-free. Um, oh my god. Tumblr era Hushy was a good time. Yeah, I, I agree. I, <laughs> I, the things were different. This is a whole other game back then. We're, pl we're playing a brand new game today. <laughs> Fave bug? Oh, holy shit. Oh, man. Fave bug. That's really hard. 
Maybe like a ladybug or some shit. Except like I don't like it when there's like eighteen thousand of them. I like it when there's one of them and they're there and I say hello. <laughs> Yeah, ferrets, ferrets, ferrets. Um, if you know anything about Vocaloid, do you have a favorite Vocaloid? Obviously, Rin is my favorite Vocaloid. Um, my favorite Utau is is Teto. I'm pretty sure she's an Utau, right? Do I like Monster Hydro? I liked Monster Hydro. I liked I liked Sugar Free Monster Hydro before they deleted it from the face of the fucking earth. Um, but they don't have a Sugar Free Monster Hydro anymore. So it's it's out of my book. It's gone. I don't care. <laughs> Do I have a favorite cig of Rhett? I have not smoked cigarettes in like fucking like several months. I quit I initially I quit smoking cigarettes for like six months, like uh, like a year and a half ago or something, and then I went. I was at the Chaz for a while when the Chaz was happening. Um, the Chaz slash Chop, like um, during like that that era of civil unrest in Seattle. I was on barricades. Uh, I was working barricades the night shift, um, and like everybody was chain smoking all the time. So I got back into smoking cigarettes when I was working barricades at the Chaz. Um, and that sucked, um, and then I had to quit again, uh, and now I've been clean from nicotine for a couple months, and I, I'm never going back. I, I'll never go back. Fuck nicotine. Nicotine sucks balls. <laughs> um, I'm addicted to other shit. I, I don't, nicotine's like, I got, my addiction quota is, is filled. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm very, very sad that they got rid of um, Green Tea Monster. That truly was... I only got to drink it one time in my life, and I fell in love with it, and I was like, this is my favorite monster, this is the perfect monster. Um, and then they, it did deleted, deleted from production. Gone. Just gone. Um, very sad. Hmm. Hmm. Would I get a pet ferret? Um, someday if I had, like, uh, more money, if I had more resources to, to properly care for a ferret and give a, and, like, give a ferret, like, a, a well-rounded, like, diet and, like, enough stimulation and, like, enrichment to, like, live, like, a, like, a happy life, I would get a ferret, probably two ferrets, because they don't like to be alone. Um, and then, like, you know, if I, if I was ever, like, in the future, like, like balling super fucking hard and like had like you know a bunch of money or whatever i would i would get a shitload of ferrets and my house would be really stinky and it'd be fucking awesome um what kind of audios would you su suggest people send into the rardcore email um if you're planning on sending audio to rardcore at gmail.com i really like um like dj tags like dj drops like like i'm whoever and you're listening to rardcore like I prefer if you didn't say for long anymore, like, not really because I'm, like, you know, I'm not interested in denying the fact that, like, my former former alias is for long, like, and that, that that is my legacy, like, it's like, it's like, it's right over there in those, in those links where you can send me money to stay alive, um, it's, it's like, I'm not, I'm not really interested in hiding it, but at the same time, I like being Rardcore now, so, like, if you're gonna send me audio, say Rardcore and not for long, um, And like, do whatever you think is entertaining or funny. Like, and and I'll I'll probably like it. <laughs> yeah, Chaz Chop was weird. I agree <laughs> entirely. Favorite weed strain? Uh, I'm trying really hard to not smoke weed anymore, except for when I'm on my period. Um, I used to really enjoy Super Silver Haze, um, for, like, production. I did a lot of, like, yo-yo stuff 
with that kind because back in when I was living in Maine, like weed became legal, but like opening a weed store was not legal yet. So there was kind of this loophole, like weed delivery system thing online where it was like, the weed is free, but like there's a $70 delivery fee, like for this, like, you know, like seven grams of, of weed. And they only had like three strain options and super silver haze was one of them. So I did a lot of production on like uh, yo-yo albums in, in 2017. Um, smoking super silver haze but I, I try really hard not to smoke weed all the time anymore because it makes me eat too much food and then I feel like shit what's my favorite addiction none of them I hate being an addict it's, it's the dumbest shit ever don't do it <laughs> don't do it <laughs> Oh, no, 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 if I had a pet bunny and I carried it around with me everywhere. Oh, if Morgan had a pet bunny and carried it around everywhere, would I pet it? Yes, I would absolutely pet it as long as, like, it's, as long as there was some way that I could understand that it wanted to be pet. If it was, if it seemed to be calm, then I would, I would pet it. <laughs> I am also kidding Paradoxorus hermaphroditus. I, lo I read the whole Wikipedia article for that fucking animal, and I found nothing, no, no information about why it is named that. Nothing. <laughs> well, do if you trade sound tags with me, I would absolutely make you a sound tag. Um, fucking... Nori, I would love to do that. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are talking about Dexter Metherfin in the chat. <laughs> it always comes back to this. Every every everyone's favorite highly accessible dissociative <laughs> All right. Well, it seems like things are slowing down here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and probably bring things to a close. Um, I love you guys very much, and I think that you're all super duper cool. Thank you so much to everyone who donated, and thank you so much to everybody who hung out and vibed. Um, I I can't thank you enough. Uh. Look at all this shit. Look at all this awesome shit that, like, fucking nobody ever listens to. You can have that if you give me $3 a month. Uh, that really helps me out. That really fucking puts a smile on my face and really, like, helps me feel like there I have some fucking small shred of stability to hang on to in this crazy fucked up world that is burning to the ground. So thank you so much to everybody who supports me uh, so directly and, um... I've got shit going on. I've got irons in the fire. Like, things are moving kind of slow right now, but, like, I've got, like, uh, I've got upcoming projects. I've got, uh, this, which is, like, gonna be, like, a, like, a noise, drone, soundscapes, kind of ambient, weird sort of album that I am gonna, I'm having a lot of fun with. Um, I, I'm doing this because Gia suggested said something at some point about me doing like some drone shit or whatever and like so and i've been getting really into like doing like large amounts of like dissociative drugs and listening to soundscapes listening to deuteronomy um listening to like just like audio geometry audio like freeform ambient like weirdness textural stuff and like i'm i'm getting into exploring that kind of stuff especially with like synthesis like synthesis is really interesting and fun and like i'm i have been learning a lot about it over the past the past two years or so and so i'm stoked for that um i have this coming up too uh i'm not gonna say anything about it i'm just gonna let you put the pieces together about what this is um and uh yeah i all right, it's a remix album. You already know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I uh, yeah. So 
There's also going to be another rema another remaster collection eventually, um, if I can get off my ass and commission the art for it. Um, but uh, thank you so much to everybody, and uh, I I fucking love you guys so fucking much, and I uh, want to put a booger on the lens of my webcam, but I'm not going to. I love you all. Please, I hope that you all have a fantastic, wonderful night. Thank you so much for dissociating with me and um, <laughs> partying with me and having a good time and watching me juggle and act like a clown. I'm having a lot of fun doing the things that I want to do, and I feel very blessed. Uh, thank